Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brian Kafke, and today we're going to delve into the ever important question Should I use Delta Live Tables? We're going to jump right in with the question Should you move to Delta Live Tables? And that leads us to other questions we need to answer before we can answer that question. Now, by the way, this is the kind of question that a data architect would ask, not necessarily a data engineer. The data engineer is probably the one who says, Okay, the data architect said this is what we're using, and that's it. But the data architect is the one who has to figure these things out. And these are my own opinion. Other people would probably come up with some different items in this list. But I do think that it fits. And I think most people who understand Delta Live Tables would agree with at least most of these. The first question I want to ask is, is your goal to maintain a modern data warehouse? Now, modern data warehouse basically means on the cloud and scaled up. The key element that really drives that, though, is your data structured. So a modern data warehouse is essentially the traditional SQL type data warehouse that was on premises now in the cloud and scaled out. If that's your goal, then jump to the next question. But I will also add to that, maybe it's not exactly like dimensionally modeled. Maybe you're bringing in things like log files or something else. Maybe it's a streaming source and you need to clean it up, put it through some transformations, get it ready for another purpose like analytics or machine learning. And in that case, even though it's not necessarily a data warehouse goal, it is structured data that you need to massage and transform and prepare. So what's the other type of data, Brian? Well, video, audio, images, those types of things are unstructured and probably not well suited to this. At least I have not seen any examples offered that talk about that. So it does seem to be targeted towards that. And of course, under the covers, we're talking about Delta tables, which are structured data. Next question, are your workloads streaming? Delta Live Tables is really well suited and I would say targeted at those streaming sources. So if you're using Kafka or Event Hub, it's the perfect service to consider. That's what it was really targeted at. But bear in mind, things like appending files or landing a lot of files together that have the same format, things like that can also be handled as structured streaming and also really benefit from using Delta Live Tables. Now, if you're using something like SQL Server tables, Azure SQL, sources that are relational and really snapshot based, I don't think there's as much benefit to using Delta Live tables. You can use it, it can work, but one of the advantages of what DLT is doing for you is it's doing things like setting sync points in your event hub and tracking where it left off. And it always knows exactly where it left off and can pick up from there. It always knows the status of what data is sitting waiting to be processed. And even when you're talking about flat files coming in, because it has an extra service added on, which you can set up, you can treat those just like streaming. But as I mentioned, if you're using something like Azure SQL tables or PostgreSQL tables, whatever, those are completely maintainable data sources that can do any of the CRUD operations, right? Create, delete, or chain. As a result of that, it's not going to benefit as much. Delta Live Tables doesn't really have a good way to monitor what's happening in your backend database. So it's probably not going to be able to do as much for you. But yes, you can use it and it can copy it. But where Delta Live Tables really shines is with streaming, structured streaming, anything that can even sort of emulate streaming, good place to be. Is it difficult for you to manage your ETL, ELT workloads? The question there is, do you have a problem? If you don't have a problem, don't fix it. So if you're going along great, you're using workflows and everything's great and you don't have a problem, you've got a nice framework, whatever you're using, then don't feel like you have to scrap everything and rebuild it. That doesn't make any sense. So just because it's trendy and hot and everybody's talking about it, don't throw out what you have and works because things are always changing. But if you are having problems like, oh my God, there's too many workflows. I don't know where the data is coming from. I don't have lineage. I don't have auditing. Then Delta Live Tables would be a good thing to look at. Do you require explicit control over your ETL? This is a really fundamental question for DLT because DLT is a declarative framework. What is declarative? Declarative means that you simply state what you want. You state the outcome, not how to get there. And because of that, you are not controlling it procedurally. So it's a really different mind shift from when you're writing traditional kinds of data transformations. You write the code, you run it procedurally, you say step one, step two, and you control everything. With DLT, you do not have that kind of control. And in all the videos, presentations, look back at Databricks' own presentations on this, they tell you not to try to take that kind of control because you'll end up messing things up because DLT is not expecting you to try to muck inside what it's doing. It is a very intelligent service that is going to do the work for you. But if you're not ready to let it do the work for you, you're gonna have problems. 
Now, areas where you may need more control than DLT gives you are in areas, I think, that are heavily regulated industries like banking, finance, investments, and any kind of health care where there's HIPAA compliance required. In those situations, you should probably take a close look and say, will we get enough control to be able to use this effectively? And any other special requirements like special logging, or maybe you have a framework that's like an audit balancing control framework or something that you already use, you may want to take a look. Can we use the existing things we've already written within Delta Live tables? Which brings me to my next point. Do you have a lot of existing ETL or ELT frameworks and notebooks and code in place? And more importantly, do you have a lot of services that you've developed within those? Maybe it's like, again, auditing frameworks. Maybe it's all kinds of special visualizations that you put out and make available to management. Maybe you do some sort of special aggregations and other things that are not part of your data, but that are used for monitoring things. And you've learned to really rely on that and you like it. In such cases, you want to take a good look because if your goal is to be all on one, and it doesn't have to be, but if your goal is say, we want to use all of one thing like Delta Live tables, then take a look at what is the effort to convert your existing code so that it works on Delta Live tables. By the way, put a comment in the description if that is your case, because I am thinking about doing some videos on how to migrate existing typical workflow engine frameworks to Delta Live tables. And finally, are you okay that DLT is exclusive to Databricks? Now, what do I mean by that? I'm developing a new term. It's my own. I call it a sticky service. And a sticky service is something where you have limited options, maybe only one option as to where you can get this particular product. By definition, open source, like Apache Spark, you can run it anywhere. You can slice and dice it. You can put it on VMs. You can put it in the cloud. You can put it on premises. It doesn't matter. In fact, something like open source Spark, you can even run like HD inside on Azure and you get a pass service, but it's still all using open source services. And the nice thing is you don't have to really pay for that open source software. You can move it wherever you want. You're not like handcuffed. So the opposite of this total flexibility is what I would call a sticky service. And the example of a very sticky service would be something like Azure Synapse or Power BI. Why, Brian? Why are those sticky? Because there's only one vendor that has them, right? If you do Power BI or you do Azure Synapse, you cannot go anywhere else. You can't even bring those on-premises more than likely. Maybe some degree with the Power BI to SQL Server on-premise, but generally, no, and definitely not Synapse. So now you're really anchored to Azure and particularly that product, which is fine, but it does limit your future flexibility. If suddenly the prices climb or they stop changing features or make it too painful to be on that service, you're gonna have to make a tough decision about rewriting everything you've built on that language. So then we come to something like Databricks. Where does Databricks fall in all this? Databricks is what I would call somewhat sticky. On the one hand, Databricks runs on the three major clouds, AWS, Azure, and Google. That means you have a lot of flexibility right there. Also, most of what Databricks does can be fairly easily, not seamlessly, but fairly easily migrated to open source Apache Spark. Databricks has been really good about taking things they're doing in Databricks and pushing it into open source Apache Spark, including Delta tables and a lot of other functionality. Delta Live Tables is not such a case. Delta Live Tables is specific to Databricks and will only run in the Databricks service. So if you do build a lot of DLT pipelines and you stop becoming very dependent on it and a lot of complex code all around it, then you may find yourself kind of sticky. In other words, not that easy to move off of Databricks. If somebody said tomorrow, we need to go to open source, it's too costly, we don't like this service, you're going to have to rewrite what you did with DLT. That's it for this time. This, by the way, was a lead-in potentially to do more things about Delta Live tables, but the first place you really want to start is do you even want to use Delta Live tables? And I don't want that outline of questions to be negative. I think Delta Live tables is great. I think in most situations, people will need to move to them, especially for large shops that have a lot of data moving around and they need to get a handle on it and want to make it easier to manage and put governance around it. I think it's really good, but it is not like you can just click a button and it's all done. You have to learn how to use it. It is declarative. It's not that simple necessarily to just adopt it and go to it, especially if you've already invested a lot in your traditional workflows. That's it for this time. I want to thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. Until next time, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Thank you.